Lesson 9, Competition. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Well, we talk about one of the most important concepts in economics today, and that is competition. See, I'm the Christian Economist. Christians care about the means, economists care about the ends. This happens to be a subject that wins on both sides. See, Christians want competition because it's the right thing to do. Economists want competition in their economic markets because it produces better outcomes. Now, the first input is called specialization. Yeah, we get it from that guy right there, Adam Smith. In The Wealth of Nations, he talked about how people are specialized in doing one thing or another. If you watched a football or baseball game this week, you noticed that those players were specialized not only in the sport they play, but in the position they played on the field. This is a clear example of specialization. Because they're specialized and they have competed for that spot, they are better at performing and that's why you saw them on TV this week or at the stadium you attended. See, specialization is also from the New Testament. In Ephesians 4.11 it says, And he gave some to be apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And so this is important for us. We need to figure out what did God make us to do? What did he make us to be? We believe as Christians the same thing economists do, that God made us to do something specific. You see how the word specialization grows out of the word specific? And we're, we're spending our lives trying to figure out, God, what do you want me to do to enrich others? Scarcity. See, here's the second input we need to talk about. Before the fall, nothing was scarce. We believe in the Christian worldview, creation, fall, redemption. In creation, there was abundance. Scarcity came about after the fall. Now, as Christian economists, we ask the question, in a scarce environment, what's the best way to distribute goods to enrich our neighbors whom we love, which I'll talk about in a few minutes here. In a scarce environment, goods get better distributed when there's competition. Think of the last thing you bought. Uh, maybe it was from Target or maybe it was from Walmart. See, in a scarce environment, when you have those two competing, they're competing to produce better quality goods at lower cost and you, the consumer, make the choice. That's how you get enriched in a scarce environment because of competition. Better quality. Okay. Didn't I just mention a baseball or football game that you watched? Do you know why those players were of better quality? Because of our subject today, competition. See, before they went on the field that you watched, they competed with other players to decide who was best. This is good in the Christian economics view because we think in scarce environments, those who compete to get those scarce places that you watched in that game just recently were of better quality. How do we produce better quality products and services for our neighbors? It's very clear that when people compete, the winner is the one who provides the best quality. Whether it's in football or baseball, or the food on your table this evening, or the computer you're watching this on, or the shoes on your feet. They are better quality because competitors were in a competitive economic situation to provide those products and services for you. Lower costs. Competition not only produces better quality, it also produces lower cost. The aforementioned Target and Walmart. Walmart is usually cheaper, but who decides where you're going to buy your goods? You do. In a competitive environment, you get to make the choice. See, we believe that every time you hear that ding at Target or Walmart, somebody bought something and got richer. I've explained this in other lessons called producer and consumer surplus. But my subject right now is, are those products cheaper? Well, yeah, you're the one who gets to vote. <laughs> in a competitive, free market capitalist environment, there are competitors for your business. You will buy the product that has the highest quality and the lowest priced based on whose assumption? Yours. You are the voter in this situation. They're competing for your business. Love your neighbor. Competition forces you to serve your neighbor. In a non-competitive environment, you're welcome to think of socialist countries, where there's a monopoly and there's only one supplier, you don't have to love your neighbor because you're the only supplier of the product or service. But in a competitive environment, you have to love your neighbor first, uh, the aforementioned Target and Walmart. 
they have to show love to their neighbor by providing these products and services that provide consumer surplus for you, the consumer. Isn't that good? See, you only have two basic choices in economics. Goods will get distributed. We can choose. Are they distributed by competition or by a monopoly? Free market economics believes they should be distributed in a competitive environment that we're talking about today. Socialism believes there should only be one supplier. Who, who gives the better products at a lower price and shows love for their neighbor? Clearly, it's the economy that has competition. If you love your neighbor, you will provide products and services that create consumer surplus for them. If you love yourself, you'll make a profit while doing so. Wealth creation. As Christian economists, we care about the poor. It is quite clear that competitive environments produce a higher quality and quantity of goods at a lower price for the poor. Who gets richer? The poor get richer because of competition. Here's a brief quote from one of my favorite economists, Thomas Sowell, writing in his book, Wealth, Poverty, and Politics. Industrial progress, mechanical improvement, all the great wonders of the modern era have meant relatively little to the wealthy. The rich in ancient Greece would have benefited hardly at all from modern plumbing. <laughs> they had running servants who replaced running water television and radio. The patricians of Rome could enjoy the leading musicians and actors in their home. They could have the leading artists as domestic retainers, ready to wear clothing, supermarkets. All these and many other modern developments would have added little to the life of the rich. They would have welcomed the improvements in transportation and medicine, but for the rest of those items, the great achievements of Western capitalism have redounded primarily to benefit the ordinary person you know what Thomas Sowell is saying in his book? He's saying that the poor get richer in a competitive environment. See, we as Christians care about the poor, and this is why we support a competitive environment that gives them choices in the many other topics we've talked about today. Well, that's lesson nine, competition. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.